Uh, okay, it's not perfectly centered, but that looks pretty good. All right, Josh, thanks for taking the time to meet with me today, man. This is awesome. <laughs> awesome, yeah. It's great great uh, being able to sit down and talk to you, Josh. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually really bad with names, and I saw your name was Josh, and I'm like, okay, this is perfect. I'm not going to mess this one up for sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we sat down uh, with, with my Twitch chat, a lot of the uh, hardcore community to get some of the top questions that people were actually wondering for hardcore and mm -hmm. um and it's pretty cool that we'll be able to get some of those answers uh before release we actually just watched one of the other interview interviews right before this which is pretty awesome um but let's let's jump into it man i know we have half an hour here uh the first question that people were really wondering is you guys mentioned there's going to be a new range on the duel to the deaths area um, mm -hmm. compared to the normal duels because we saw that people were kiting uh, maybe out of that range, maybe even on accident or like feared or sheep mm -hmm. out of that range. Um, yeah. Will you be able to tell us that new range on the duel to the death area? Is that is that decided upon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about double currently uh, what it was before. Um, and, and, you know, in terms of being like CC'd out of it and stuff like that, we do have uh, some things in place that if you're under the effect of CC, you won't uh, forfeit, you know. Uh, so uh, we've kind of tried to, 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 to protect a little bit against, you know, just getting chain feared out of it. Uh, but the range is pretty big. It's about twice what it was before. Wait, so can you clarify that again? So if you get feared out of it and you're under the effect of CC, that is that countdown timer not going to tick down? Yeah. Or if it does get mm -hmm. to... Okay. Um, and then say the fear ends, that's when the countdown timer would start ticking? Yeah, you, you, you'll need to... You'll want to make your way back in, obviously, if that happens. But, um, you know, you if you get feared again, it will stop again. So it should be... Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot harder to get accidentally uh nudged out than it maybe was before great and if you're out of the dual area and then get feared so the timer started does that say seven seconds left and then get feared how would that interact mm -hmm. i i believe that they would cancel it i'm don't quote me i'm not <laughs> i didn't implement it myself i played around with it a little bit but uh i'm not sure if i am fully versed on every edge case uh, with it but ideally yeah it doesn't uh it wouldn't the, the timer would essentially stop if you go out of bounds because of cc great that's awesome that's really really cool to know i think um that's a really good addition with that fear that cc change i was not aware of that mm -hmm. so great thank you so much mm -hmm. um so we um you guys have talked about uh griefers and and people that are trying to ruin other people's fun or something like that um so i mm -hmm. wanted to the community was asking like if there was um more clear guidelines on what is and isn't reportable griefing is there going to be guidelines posted or, or how is that going to look so this is an interesting question but it's also kind of hard to answer um I think that the best answer I can give for this is that we're going to have to take these situations kind of in a case by case basis. Um, if we were to say this is exactly what constitutes a grief, this is what doesn't and lay out the framework for everyone that's that's like the rigid rules. Uh, I think we'd really just kind of be equipping people to try and skirt those rules. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so it's one of those things that I, I think common sense it plays a big part of this. Like, I, ideally, you approach hardcore, you play the game, you you are you're, you're good to each other. You know the uh, old Christmas and adage, "Be good to each other." That really uh, matters in hardcore. And uh, you know, obviously, if someone goes out of their way to try and do something to be disruptive and it's very obvious that's a totally appropriate to report and you know we 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 look at that and take whatever action we feel is appropriate on the same coin we really want to just uh, 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 try and uh, make sure people aren't just spam reporting people just to get them banned or get them in trouble. Uh, just like we'll take severe action against uh, folks who who intentionally try to ruin the play experience of others, this, that's another form of griefing is spam reporting someone frivol frivolously. So we're also going to take severe uh, action onto that too. So it's mostly just use your common sense. If, if if you're pulling in a in a dungeon and you're doing normal pulls and you know somebody backs into an extra mob and the tank dies because the healer can't keep up, that's not griefing. That's just the game, right? <laughs> uh, so like, don't report your healer for that, right? Like, I mean, I, it's it's you know, it's kind of, kind of common sense stuff there. So, uh, but yeah, we're, we're going to take them on a case by case basis, and that that's pretty much the stance. And that's kind of how we've done it so far. We've we've done a lot of actions on uh, on uh, unofficial hardcore servers and stuff, and that's how we kind of approach that. Great. I, I love that. I, I think it's tricky, um, like you mentioned, when there's guidelines posted, people will try to skirt mm. those rules. I hosted a, a level 20 tournament recently, and I learned that. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, 
you can think of like all the rules in the book, right? And like, okay, you can't do this, can't do this. But yeah. people will come up with like one rule. That, like, I never thought of that, man. Yeah. Um, so that I think that's great. Uh, more common mm -hmm. sense. Don't inter don't interrupt other people's play and stuff like that. Um, Just play the video game. Be good to each other. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Love it. Great. Um, next question. Uh, how many hardcore servers will there actually be? So um, I, I know there's been a lot of discussion because, of course, we want people to be able to play. Right. Um, yeah. But if there's if there's so many servers on launch, maybe six months out, that could be an issue. So how do you guys yeah. um, plan on like kind of tackling that? Generally, when we look at any kind of fresh environment or any kind of uh, a new game mode, it's 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 a difficult uh, thing to try and kind of size that appropriately. The answer is generally as few as possible. And the reason for that is simple. Like you said, you know, there will be a lot of interest early on. There will be a lot of people. There might be even be a few little queues, but we don't really want to open way too many servers and then have it essentially like one full server because that's the good server and then <laughs> yeah. everything else is, is empty. So I think it's safe to say we'll definitely have more than one in like the US and EU. Um, so there will be some choice there, but uh, uh, we're going to have as few as possible. It's, it's hard to give a specific number um, uh, because we're, we, we, we kind of have to look at it as uh, you know, on the day of and like what what happens, it's really hard for us to kind of gauge that ahead of time. But, uh, you know, more than one and less than a lot. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. probably the best answer I could give. No, that's great. That's great. So w would it be something to like on day one, there could be two servers or something. And then uh, if it's yeah. like this is clearly there's 15 hour yeah. queues, let's let's spin mm -hmm. up a third or fourth. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be super hesitant to spin up extras if we need to. For one thing, hardcore is kind of unique in that they're you know, obviously like, like wrath or something, everyone kind of wants to go to the in the it server and with hardcore, I think there's going to be some people who are like, you know what? I don't want a full server. I want to kind of just play chill. There's people who do that now in the unofficial challenge. You know, I, I've, I've seen people running around like ATS was my old server. I see people running around on ATS era doing hardcore. It's just like, they're just basically yeah. alone. Uh, and it, that's fine. And some people want to do that. So uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to, as always, you know, we have kind of a war room when we do these launches and we, we keep an eye on populations kind of like hour to hour. And, uh, you know, once we get to a certain threshold, you know, if we have to, we'll, we'll do more. But we really want to, as few as possible is always the right answer to us. Yeah. Okay. Great. And I, I, uh, I'm kind of similar with you. I'll, I want to be on a server that's not like overly crowded sometimes, yeah. just to experience Fargo Deep Mine and all of its like you know scary moments. If it's there's too yeah. many people, sometimes you'll have that. But as a you know, if I'm streaming, there's gonna be like a bunch of people coming anyway, having a good time. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, great. So the next question here, uh, the community was wondering, you guys did mention Petri Flasks, um, that you're kind mm -hmm. of monitoring it, taking a look at it. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people are maybe worried that in their current state with no cooldown, they're, they're really powerful. Um, are there any updates here on, on what you guys plan, or is it more going to be just like a monitoring type of situation um, as things roll out? You know, I, th I think sometimes we say, oh, we're going to monitor it. And people might think like, oh, that doesn't mean anything. It, it really does in this situation. This is probably the the uh, the kind of like hot button issue that we've talked about the most uh, internally amongst ourselves. And there's been a lot of opinions, like great opinions uh, uh, on like, let's like, nerf it into the ground or keep it as is. And I think uh, the the most important thing is is to under to just kind of keep in mind that that's not like day one that's not going to be a thing that's going to be available to everybody that's going to be a kind of a, a limited commodity very early on and yeah as the server matures it might it might be a little bit more prolific it might be a little bit more common but one of the things that really kind of stuck out with us and made us kind of hesitate to make a big change to this is that you know, there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of kind of uh, uh, players that are sort of approaching hardcore for the first time they might be experienced wow players but you know it takes on average around 200 hours to level a character, a character to 60. Petri flasks aren't really available. I think their minimum level is 50. So you really, that's only an end game thing. And, you know, for some folks, uh, you know, who are very comfortable leveling hardcore characters, are very comfortable re-rolling, it's not a big deal to them to just die and then re-roll. Someone like you, it might be content, you know, it might be a fun <laughs> moment to, to have with your audience. But for kind of Bob the Hunter, who's just sort of like gigging along, he, he managed to get to 60 and he, he goes to his uh, first, you know, a molten core with his guild or something. Like if he accidentally pulls something or over pulls or it's like, do we 
is it okay to have no escape to that situation and your whole guild, whole guild wipes right then and there? Um, so we do think it's kind of important to have some sort of protection against like, oops, a bad thing happened. I mean, even with Petri's, I've seen guilds lose 15 people yeah. in a, in a mm -hmm. bad poll. You know, it still happens. You can still die. Um, but it's just a little bit of extra like safety net for folks. Now in its current form, might be too good, honestly. Like, I don't think anyone's saying it's not powerful because it's definitely very powerful. And I would maybe encourage people who are like, I'm going to be a Petri mogul and I'm going to, you know, own the market in Petris. Maybe, maybe don't put all your eggs in that basket because mm -hmm. if we're going to make a, a, a swift change, it will probably be to that. So, uh, you know, uh, so that was a lot of words to basically say we are going to keep a very close eye on it. We're thinking about it a lot. And uh, if it gets to be a problem, we're going to put a, put a, put a stop to it pretty quick. Great. I mean, geez, that's as good of a answer as we could have hoped for. I think that's really exciting. Um, mm -hmm. I think there, there's players on kind of both sides of the debate, and yeah. uh, you know, w you know, whatever you think, I think this is a, a good kind of middle ground where you guys are going to keep an eye. If it's if it's going crazy, then some type of change where, yeah, whatever uh, fix that you guys come up with. Um, oh, yeah. Really? The next question, people. Uh, have been wondering is have the have you guys the devs uh, considered the idea of a prestige style system as players mm. uh, reach level 60 uh, so for example if you hit 60 you could prestige go back to one um, and mm. then maybe have some type of buff similar to the ears uh, from Akira of like I gotcha. hit 60 once or I hit 60 twice or any um, ideas like that yeah, we've seen all, we've seen kind of very recently a lot of suggestions around like what would it look like if you reincarnated or like re you know what I mean you like rerolled your same character. We've seen it also suggested with death like can I just hit a button and just keep my character customization, keep the race and class, and just go again on that character that's wiped clean. Um, that's a really interesting idea. Personally, I think that's really cool. Um, uh, not really any plans. Like we don't have any. We're not like yes, it's on the roadmap to do it. But uh, that's a cool suggestion. And that's, I think, one of the best things about hardcore, and one of the funnest things, at least for us as developers, is that this is just the beginning. Like we're 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 kind of putting out a framework of like okay, first release. It's literally just don't die. There's a few extra bells and whistles, but it's pretty it's pretty stripped down. And that's that's by design. We want people to kind of fill in their own sort of challenge and choose your own adventure kind of approach to how they want to approach it. Um, but at the base level, it's really just you die and you're done. Um, and from there, though, we can build that up. And, uh, you know, hardcore is like we kind of uh, envision it as like an evergreen game mode, basically. That just means that it's something that's kind of always there in the background. The content is its own sort of motivating factor, and it doesn't need a, a ton of of constant changes like the live game, like Modern World of Warcraft or, or classic with content phases needs. It can kind of just exist and people can drop in and drop out of it. But being the way it is kind of as a framework later on, you know, say you play for a couple months, you kind of, you lose a character or two, you get to 60, you're like, okay, I'm gonna put it down for a minute. You know, a couple months later, we could add like something like a self found mode or something else to kind of spice it up a little bit. Um, and that just kind of gives you a little bit more reason. Oh, I'll, I'll hop back in and I'll try it again, uh, you know, with this different kind of twist. And I think that's cool. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit here. The last question sure. that we, I actually sent over was, uh, do you plan to continue development and expand on hardcore after yes. initial release? Yes. I think you kind of answered yeah. that one. Um, yeah, and yeah. if I heard that correctly, you it is an evergreen game mode in, in, in the sense mm -hmm. that it's not going to need um, as much maybe attention in terms of like, this is a new expansion. This is a new, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. uh, 1.0 patch or 2.0 or whatever. But there mm -hmm. is going to be if I heard you correctly, yeah. plans to develop maybe an SSF mode or other features that the community might be yeah. really excited about. Yeah, I, and, and I don't want to make it sound like we're not going to pay attention to it because this is actually like kind of our passion project. Like this was the thing that the team came together and we're just like, we've been playing this for honestly a long time. We had the Soul of Iron system in Season of Mastery, which was kind of our first like wink and a nod to uh, uh, the, the hardcore community. And we've liked it for a long time. And now we're really excited to finally kind of have it. And it's sort of a playground for us where we can, uh, you know, keep, keep, keep on trying to add fun things as time goes by but you know it really just kind of depends on what the community wants as time goes on um and you know we're going to be watching feedback and conversations we already are we watch a ton of this stuff and we have a lot of ideas there's so many great ideas uh for where this can go that it's really just you know uh it, it's it's we'll see how you know how popular it is and how 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 uh you know how that all goes and, and we can make 
more adjustments as time goes by. Great, happy to hear it. Um, another uh, question that a, a lot of people seem to be asking is if there's plans for a toggleable death announcement feature. So I, I know in yeah. other um, interviews that they've said that mm -hmm. it might be annoying, right? With these these, these constant mm -hmm. pop-ups and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Is there plans for uh, maybe even a feature with death announcements that's disabled by default, or you could mm. even disable it after a certain level? So like level one through 20 deaths don't count, mm -hmm. but anything higher than 20 would. Sure. Um, is there any plans for something like that? Well, I mean, we already have that with guilds, and yeah. and it's it, we, this has already gone through a couple iterations on the PTR. The first version of this was very lightweight. It was really literally just a text message in chat that says, you know, uh, Josh died at level twenty whatever. Um, but now we've added a little bit more to that. We it's it's a raid warning kind of thing that pops up oh, on cool. screen now. It's not huge. It's not flashy. We don't really want it to be super in your face flashy. And this is the kind of thing that an add on can also help with this if you really want to get something that's really loud but the base version is just a pop-up and it will tell you in the chat it says you know josh has died at level 29 in the barrens to a razor claw raptor or whatever <laughs> uh so so it, it has some some information and it's also in chat settings you can kind of go into the chat window settings and you can uncheck it if you don't want to see it it's like any other like guild any other channel uh you can uh turn it on and off basically uh, in the chat settings so we've already done that we made a bunch of changes to it since the like the first version of it like i said was pretty simple and and, uh, you know, I could definitely see us uh, continuing to iterate on it. But um, yeah, so that there's already something for guilds. For friends, that's a little bit trickier. Uh, not insurmountable, but definitely a little bit trickier. And uh, so we, we've kind of kept it to just the guild because we do are, are kind of sensitive to it, it being uh, a little bit much if, you know, it's a lot of different people together. Um, but obviously, you know, I, the community has kind of already uh, uh, figured out solutions to sort of link guilds together and, and share announcements and stuff. And if that's something people want to do, that they totally can. But we're going to keep looking at it. And, and, you know, if it makes sense to iterate further, we will. Cool. Um, for the you you mentioned the in chat death uh, announcement. You can mm -hmm. toggle that off. Can you toggle the announcement that comes up as like a raid warning as well? Yeah, yeah. It, it, I think it all it, it's all tied into the same. Like, it's all okay. Box or whatever. Great. So if players want something like that, you would recommend downloading some type of add-on that will will allow like a server wide announcement. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that, that's fine for now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I totally think that that's great. I think also with the the solo self found conversations, I think players want that. They can do it right away, um, which is pretty Absolutely, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the next one, and and I think the last interview might have touched on this just a little bit. Um, but if we could get more details on the new leash mechanics, uh, mm -hmm. preventing mobs from kiting outside of uh, certain zones. Um, like Terra Mist, Stormwind, etc. cetera. Um, mm -hmm. Is this going to affect maybe fence kiting, circle kiting, tree mm -hmm. kiting in any way um, for mobs? I know um, a lot of players might enjoy trying to do very difficult mobs and maybe on a fence or something. Will it have any impact on that or is it more distance um, for pulling yeah. a mob out of its zone? Yeah, you know, being able to kite effectively as like a hunter or a mage, that's a that's a skill expression activity. We don't want to really mess with that too much. And we've iterated a lot on the the range. I think when we first started, it was like 200 yards, which is basically nothing. That's not good enough. So we've we it's very tunable. Um, essentially, we can basically just set the number on the server, and then that lets us go further or farther or further or closer. But the way it works is it's essentially when you pull a mob at basically what we call like its origin points, the point at which it was aggroed on its path it can go in a linear straight line x yards um currently i think it's like a thousand it's pretty far um uh and it, and it doesn't necessarily like zone boundaries don't actually matter that much it's it's really just the distance from where it originated um and then there's also some exceptions to this too like um like uh the the demons for the rope dollar quest for example they have something like 10 or 20 times the normal range like you mm. can go you can go. You can really go. I think when we were testing it, we could take the Silithus demon to like the the water in Tenaris or something. Like oh that. wow! So, okay. Yeah, you're fine. You're you're, you're going to be good there. And obviously, if abuse pops up because of those, we'll we'll look at it. But uh, we didn't want to really mess with like normal gameplay. And like the example you used with um, fences, like if you're doing Vagash and you pull him down the hill and there's that little that right, little ranch yeah. with the fence, you can totally do that. 
and it doesn't matter. You do it all day if you're if you're within that that sort of range from that origin point. It's really just a linear distance in a straight line. That that that's 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 the distance. Great. I think that's a perfect solution. I, I think mm-hmm. right away when when Hardcore Official got announced, that was yeah. one of the things I was like really worried about. And I think you guys handled that yeah. that perfect. I think that'll be that'll be great. Um, yeah. And I think you kind of already touched on this question as well, but maybe we can get more insight um, here. Would you consider uh, kind of like a go again button um, to make it easy <laughs> for players to lock in the name they've reserved, yeah. uh, you know, the hairstyle, all that kind of stuff on their sure. characters. So they just go back to level one. And then even a, a separate idea that, that the chat was coming up with is like maybe with an even a, a buff count that's like this tune has seven tries, eight tries, 12, <laughs> 15 tries. Um, is that something you guys would consider um you know moving forward i think nothing's off the table i think this is the most fun thing like i said earlier like we keep watching you know uh conversations and discussions and honestly this idea isn't something i personally had thought of until like a week ago or whatever when i first kind of saw some chatter pop up around it and i think it's awesome i think that's a great idea and there's tons of great ideas like that 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 we could totally do so uh the short answer is we don't really have any like i said we don't have anything on our roadmap right now like we don't have tasks in to to do this but nothing is off the table and that sounds like a that sounds like a really fun idea cool i'm I'm excited to see the landscape of hardcore and like a year or two from now too and the community yeah. comes up and iterate and then you guys iterate on all of these ideas i think there can yeah. be a lot of fun i mean as a content creator i think that's one of the things that i've really enjoyed about hardcore is that it's like oh once you kind of start getting in there mm-hmm. there's a lot you can really do yeah. um and the final question uh, maybe we can do some bonus ones too but the final question here is Will there be a time and date to reserve names? I know a lot of people in the chat or you know on on the forums or whatever are looking like, oh, I want this name. I know with other classic launches like Era in 2019, maybe with Wrath as well, maybe maybe not. Mm-hmm. Um, there was like kind of like a a date and a time set that players could log in, get their name, but they couldn't play the game yet. It was just to kind of make yeah. their character a yeah. name. Is is that is there any plans for something like that? Um, unfortunately not this time. Like last time we did that was season of mastery. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's handy to be able to plan. We know that people like to be able to plan and stuff, but, uh, we're, we, we decided to skip that one this time. So no, uh, unfortunately there won't be an, a name reservation period. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it, it's probably not a hundred percent necessary, but a lot of people are wondering and stuff like that. We do have a, a, a little bit of time, so maybe we can do Ooh. a couple, uh, bonus ones if, if that's okay with you. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Great. First question I was wondering is what are you going to roll day one on hardcore? I mean, I'm probably a dwarf paladin. I mean, that's like kind of my first love or my, maybe even a dwarf priest. I was playing priest on, on PTR and I was having a lot of fun with it. I, I died in the most bonehead way on PTR and I kind of <laughs> want a redemption arc for my my, my poor pigtailed priest. Uh, but, you know, uh, priest or paladin. I've, I told the chat, if you ever die in hardcore, what you have to do is 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 instantly go again and kill what killed you so you can yeah. uh, assert yeah, dominance. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know, it, it was a really funny death, too, because it was one of the, it's one of those game knowledge things. Like there's this goblin defias guy in this in this house next to a dock in Elwyn Forest. And I forgot. I knew at one point that he spawns mobs when you aggro him and it, you get overwhelmed really quickly. And that got me, and I was like, "Hardcore guys, this uh, is game knowledge. <laughs> That's like the most important thing." Well, so yeah, it's it was a fun death, but but uh, I'm looking forward to my redemption arc. Oh, when I first started hardcore, I died to a pillager, and it's just like, come on, that is one <laughs> yeah. of the mobs that you go going into it. You're like, all right, I'm gonna play as safe as possible. Yeah. But there was mm-hmm. a pillager behind like a cart that aggroed, mm-hmm. and it shot me through the cart, and I had no idea until mm-hmm. it was too late because i mean if if two pillagers are on you at that level 14 i died in like one second um yeah. so yeah that one still hurts that one still hurts. There's, there's a couple of questionable line of sight rules in the original wow too so it's it's not always easy to 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 escape a a, a fireball bearing down on you i you know i like it though that like some yeah. people might call it like a bit janky or whatever but it's pretty cool that if you have the game knowledge of how yeah. the the classic era game interacts with some of these mm-hmm. NPCs and line of sight. It's like, that's the game knowledge that's going to maybe keep you alive or not. And that's pretty cool. I know there's mm-hmm. some members of the community that have done some extensive testing with like log out spots and yeah. just like the quickest possible way of doing things. Mm-hmm. And they get, they get pretty intense with it. Um, 
So how are you feeling as a dwarf paladin with the bubble hearth change? Uh, I mean, I, it was, it's, uh, I understand, like I was in agreement that, that that was the right approach, you know, having the ability to sort of have a guaranteed escape, you know, talk about Petri and, and the, the, the things with that, that's, there's some cost to that. That's not, that's not a trivial, like I can just do this once an hour with no, you know, no cost or, 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 or anything like that. And, the the pally bubble hearth was seemed like one of those things that you know the unofficial challenge a lot of people uh restricted themselves in that way and that was a, there were good reasons for it and we we felt like that was uh kind of worth retaining um but uh yeah we we didn't we don't like to make the class adjustments but kind of on the same note that like you know horde has shamans and they can't use onk so it's kind of like it seemed kind of fair i guess uh, that wasn't the only reason, but it it was a reason. It kind of was like, well, you know, it's, it's a little bit of balance there, I guess. I personally love it, but I was pretty surprised to see that change because like you mentioned, yeah. I, uh, class changes don't come lightly, right? I mean, the game's been yeah. out so long to just change something so fundamental, but I personally think it's a yeah. great change. I think it, it really aligns with the spirit of hardcore and uh, I think it's exciting. Yeah, I've played a lot of characters in hardcore so far and it's like Paladin is just so safe even without it. Like if you're an engineer and you got target dummies and you got a bubble up, you got a stun, like it's very easy to survive situations that might kill other classes. So I think pallies are gonna be just fine. Great. And just cause uh just because we have the time, the uh some people seem to be asking about achievements uh within mm -hmm. hardcore. Uh, I think I'll I probably know what you're gonna say. I mean, the add-on has uh uh, that yeah. kind of built in already. Is there any plans potentially to have some type of achievement system for players that want to go above and beyond just not dying? So just as you said, you know, class changes don't come lightly. Achievements. So the way we view original World of Warcraft is it's probably the most kind of sandboxy of of the of of any version of WoW. And part of that is kind of the world just kind of dumps you in and you're just sort of nobody. And it's like, hey, go do, go, go, go kill monsters, kid. You know, it's like, there's not a lot of like guidance. There's not a lot of rails to it. And, um, you know, the, the later eras of World of Warcraft were kind of built around achievements being built for specific challenges and kind of giving you a list of things to, to strive for. But building that into the base version of class of like classic era seems uh maybe a little bit of a bridge too far to us so no real plans for achievements however i will say the soul of iron system is probably actually a really good vector mm. uh, and, and and delivery method for certain kind of achievements like for example if you kill ragnaros without dying and you have the soul of iron active or you go turn it on you'll see a survivor of the fire Lord. right yeah because because the the tooltip expands with all these little little things you've done like hit 60 survivor of the fire lord i think that's we don't have anything for launch that a pass what we had in season of mastery but that's a great i think opportunity there to add other little kind of like visual nods it's like ah this guy did a hard yeah. thing. um you know and i think that's cool i think that's even cooler than achievements in a way because it's like it's not just some arbitrary number that i gotta make go bigger you can see it's it. like yeah. a you can see it and, and that even has like a visual proc like if you do survivor of the fire lord it's like this fire whirlwind thing that pops up on you every few minutes it's just a visual kind of oh that guy's serious business and i will say uh, every boss in boss if for every 40 player raid has a similar thing like that and had it in season of mastery no one ever got it past uh, uh ragnaros so wow. we're going to be looking forward to seeing people with the survivor of the shadow flame survivor of the old god or whatever well i don't remember what it's called but there's one for each boss each in boss so and that, that buff uh, is going to be in hardcore yeah, yeah, you can go turn it on. It's in Iron Forge and Under City, depending on your faction, obviously. So, oh, that is uh, there's, sweet. There, there's Watcher NPCs that you can go talk to to turn that on. Okay, I didn't actually play SOM, so that that's really mm -hmm. awesome news for me. Um, one yeah. of the reasons I think I probably got into PvP like back in the day, like on retail mm -hmm. back in uh, TBC, was I just saw people on their their uh, their gladiator mounts with their titles, yeah. and I'm like sure. just AFK, and I'm like just drooling. I'm like that is so cool. So I remember uh, you know getting my first gladiator mount and flying it around. I'm like this is awesome. Uh, yeah. I think some players love that uh, kind of like little extra challenge. I, I think they'll be excited for that um josh this has been great thank you so much for taking uh, the time to sit down and answer some of these questions the community has been uh, wondering about we're all excited for the 24th and uh thanks for taking the time 
Absolutely. It's been really awesome to kind of watch your journey discovering hardcore over the past few months. And, and uh, you know, everybody's uh, enthusiasm for this is just so exciting. We can't wait. This is a labor of love. This is a love letter to you guys. You guys uh, really kind of came out and uh, made this mode what it is. And we want to, we can't wait for you to get your hands on it on the official realms. Great. Thanks again. And uh, have a good one. Bye. See ya. Ah, we did it, boys. We did it. We did it. We did it. That was awesome. I was uh, a, a bit worried if like if everything would go well, but I think that that was that was dope, man. That was dope. So you guys came up with those questions. Like, I saw a couple people in the chat saying like, "Oh wow, those were some really good questions, guys." You you guys came up with those questions. <laughs> you, you guys came up. I I was like uh, the other day I was streaming and we were trying to brainstorm all these questions. That was all from the Twitch chat. Um, yeah. Yep. 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 The exact time of the launch for US. Oh. Do we have a time that it's launching on the 24th? That's a great question. Do we have a time? Oh, it's 3 p.m. PST. Oh, man. Yeah, the PC giveaway will launch on the 24th. So if you guys um, didn't know, Starforge PCs, my sponsor for the stream, is giving away a PC because we hit 60 on the Priest. So we're going to be doing that giveaway on the 24th, but it seems like it's going to be a Twitter post. I'll be streaming as I tweet, and it seems like there's going to be a link with some type of entry. Once you enter, then a winner will be chosen. And I'll also give you the, the link in Twitch chat. If you don't have Twitter, it's fine. You can use it in Twitch chat. Um, I'll probably share the link in Discord. I'll share the link on YouTube. So everyone will basically have the link no matter what platform you're on.